All right, so totally unplanned video, but I'm uh, on a road trip heading back from uh, upstate New York to Cape May, New Jersey, right? And so I'm driving on 81, I-81 South in Pennsylvania. And I got to thinking, like, when I drove up from Jersey to upstate New York, I ran into, like, really bad traffic on Interstate 81, really in the middle of nowhere. If you've never driven, done this drive on this interstate in northern Pennsylvania, uh, this is, like, in the mountains. This is, this is like, uh, small, you know, this is country, right? So if you look, like, we're in dead stopped traffic. And this traffic is because of construction. And I was thinking, I was going through this coming up, right? This isn't, um, you know, this isn't a traffic jam created by ebbs and flows of um, traffic like in an urban center where you've got many highways merging together and the congestion on any one highway could drive traffic issues, right? You, it's difficult to optimize. But I was thinking about, you know, digital supply chain, the cost of this kind of stuff right here, right? I mean, I think most people hate traffic jams because of their, you know, triggers them or whatever it is, you know, they're just, people are just impatient. But the real impact of traffic jams like this are, you know, on the way up, I probably lost, uh, I think I definitely, I lost about an hour to being stuck in traffic supposed to be about a four hour and 45 minute drive and it ended up being about six hours from Cape May, New Jersey to Ithaca. And and all that, all those delays were in Northern Pennsylvania and construction, specifically where I'm at right now, which is like Clark Summit. So the question is, if construction takes place everywhere, why is it, like what is it about this construction that creates problems and how could the digital supply chain, what's the cost and then how could the digital supply chain improve it? Well, you know, I spent an hour in traffic yesterday. So I lost an hour of, uh, I lost an hour just to traffic, okay? Caused by, um, you know, really it's mistakes in the way that the, the lane closures are designed here. It doesn't take, like I'm not even a civil engineer and it's not hard for me to tell what the actual problem is here. So one of the things, I travel all over the country and I definitely notice different ways that construction is approached specifically if you look in the south or not in the south but in texas for example um you know we have a lot of combinations of like private roads and public roads right where companies essentially build the road they have an incentive to get it done as quickly as possible charge a toll you know get their money back so you know i used to make this joke about the construction that happened here in northern Pennsylvania on 81 near Scranton while I was in college it started in the 90s that that construction lasted 20 years in Scranton on I-81 uh, I, th I actually I think it was 22 years non-stop construction uh, they like spent four times as much money and it took four times as long now obviously incentives you know there's a lot of like construction and or corruption in highway bids here and you're not hiring the best people to do the project but um you know it's kind of a running joke that in the northeast like highway construction is not designed to its primary focus isn't to improve infrastructure the primary focus is to you know there's a lot of like financial kickbacks and stuff that go through like the you know highway construction process which is controlled by public entities but one of the things you notice here like how could the digital supply chain help solve this problem like me sit, sp spending an hour in traffic uh, i because i drive a tesla obviously it's inefficient energy wise but not as big as like say all these carbon combustion or internal combustion engines all these cars that are spending an hour in traffic just idling okay if your motivation motivation is to become more sustainable then this is you have to try and reduce the amount of time people just sit in traffic okay this is an unforced error here. So if you look, what they basically do here is they may be working in a work zone that's maybe a half mile long. One of the biggest differences you notice when you're in the Northeast uh, when it comes to highway traffic relative to like say in Texas, 
is that in Texas, they're only closing the part of the highway they're working on. So, and I don't know if that's a policy, if that's law, I don't know where, where the difference is, but they only close the section of the highway where they're actually working. One of the things you see here is it's almost as if they close the section of the highway they're going to be working on for this whole month. So you'll have miles and miles and miles of lanes that are closed where no one's working. There's nothing going on there. It's just, you know, they just have cones on it and you can't drive on it. Um, well, that isn't such a huge problem. Obviously, the only place where traffic can be created if, let's say you have no exits at all, is where you merge. You go from two lanes to one lane or three lanes to one lane. You're obviously, the traffic is going to back up right there. The problem with what they do here in the Northeast is they will close lanes for miles and miles and miles. I mean, some in some cases, 10 miles of lane closures where they're only working in a small section, maybe a quarter of a mile or a half a mile. And that that closure will, will span many exits. So you'll have multiple exits that have to merge into that one lane. So for every place that there's an exit where you have lane closure, then you're gonna create congestion points. So that's why up here, I mean, we're literally sitting, we're not going anywhere. Um, we've probably gone since I started this video, maybe a hundred meters. There's no accident up here. What it is is there's an exit and you have a merge point in the lane or in, in the, you have a merge point where it's going to go down to one lane. And then where it's closed for like the next seven miles, there are a series of exits and they're down to one lane. So you're going to have congestion points. We're going to stop, stop, stop. Obviously, you know, a d digital transformation could solve this problem. Okay. Um, number one, by measuring congestion on each of the exits. Okay. You can determine the total number of vehicles that are going to want to merge uh, once we're down to one lane, right? You'd actually do a, a real time traffic study, you know, with the right sensors out here. Moreover, you know, if you collect effective data on what causes traffic congestion during construction, then you can effectively plan your lane closures right down to the point where the merge should take place and when, and how much of the lane you should close. But right now, none of that's happening here. I mean, um, there's no, and, and why, why is none of that happening? Well, the answer is, is efficiency isn't a priority. Limiting the not, how long cars sit in traffic not only is it not a priority, it's not even a concern. Um, there's no, you know, and the reason that there's no concern is because there is no direct, there's no direct incentive to, um, you know, there's no incentive to care about that. You know what I mean? It's the people who live here, the people who drive here. I mean, and by the way, in both directions, traffic is going nowhere. So that is a, you know, the economy has stopped, uh, efficient, you know, sustainability has dropped, efficiency has dropped, and all you have are just thousands of people wasting time right now because of a lack of strategy and uh, poor planning and execution. And this is just, this is a real life example. Like, how does life get better using digital technology? Well, Imagine every car here had full self-driving. And so you didn't have the emotions or the, you know, because obviously what you end up with in these traffic jams is human beings doing stupid things, making things worse, right? Full self-driving, if every car here used FSD, if every tractor trailer used FSD, no big deal, you know? Um, we would move, we'd move much faster. But the bigger thing is planning the lane closure. So here we are. So right now we're in one lane and we're basically going nowhere. And the question would be, well, why? If there's no merge point, why would traffic go nowhere? Well, the answer is there is a merge point. The lane is closed for many, many miles. And we have an exit coming up here, exit 199, which means we're going to have an on-ramp at exit 199. So you have cars coming off that exit who are going to be merging into this single lane of traffic, which is bumper to bumper already. And that's the reason we're moving nowhere. Whereas if, if the people who decided how to handle these lane closures 
took that into account, you could you would plan your lane closures more effectively to keep traffic moving. But the point is, is that when they do these lane closures right now, because there is no digital strategy that is the why we want to be digital, so that, and the why is to be more sustainable, to be more efficient, to keep traffic moving, et cetera, because that doesn't exist, we're sitting in absolutely dead stop traffic. On the other side, same thing. There are no accidents. This is just poor lane closures and poor lane closures yield the poor design of the lane closure uh, yields this literally thousands of vehicles in the mountains of northern Pennsylvania um, sitting on the road consuming energy uh, people aren't working they're not generating value for the economy we're just sitting here and we're doing nothing but wasting and poor planning is the reason. Now, there's certainly an argument. Hey, I act, if I'm being honest with you, I like these moments where we're slowed down, throw on an audio book, you know, and just kind of enjoy myself. But the point is, is that once you take this situation right here, thousands, okay, and you, ex and you extend that out, extend that out across all of the Northeast, you can see just how significant this is, an, this is unforced error stuff, right? This is easy stuff to fix as long as it's a focus. Digital can do it, All right? Off my soapbox.